a true piece of motorcycle drag racing history. Where are we? Yes, we're at APE on a Saturday. APJ, I didn't know you work even on Saturdays. Uh, I, I haven't been here in the last few Saturdays, but uh, I got some special projects I'm working on out there. So I came down here when nobody else is here and uh, and do it. You're, fil you're filming my filthy, dirty office here. It's beautiful. I didn't know anybody was coming. Yeah, you didn't know I was going to come bug you. I, uh, I apologize yeah. for that. You know that if I come up to this area, though, I got to talk to you. And we got to talk about these helmets. What a collection. Larry Spiderman McBride and Elmer Tretz helmets side by side. Yeah. How did you get this from me after Elmer passed away? You know, it's a funny thing. I was telling some I was telling somebody Gary Stoper the other day we were talking about this. Elmer Tretz and I were best friends and I had nothing from Elmer Tretz. I had nothing signed by him or anything because you know you don't ask anybody, hey, can I have your autograph? You know, and uh, so here he, then after he passed away, I I'm not an autograph seeker anyway, so Anyway, my wife acquired this helmet. It was some conspiracy between her and Jackie Trent. It's all filthy dirty. If I had known you were going to do this, I'd have had it all printed up. It's a piece but, of history. Um, so this, when he died, he, he Elmer had uh, was having trouble with his vision, so he was starting to wear glasses when he raced. So he couldn't wear those with the Simpson. So he had a Nolan helmet on when he died. Okay. And. Uh, and uh, so, anyway, this was one that was be before the glasses. That was the retired helmet, I'm sure. Yeah. So my wife acquired this. I got this as a birthday present or Christmas present or something. What an amazing present. Um, and a, a, a part off of Elmer's bike? This, <clears throat> Elmer used to make the fuel injection for the injected Harleys. And this is the casting that he did. And he sent the casting to us. And we completely machined the castings here. And then we sent them to Elmer, and Elmer put them all together with the butterflies and all that stuff. And I just happened to realize I had one of the old castings around. But we machined these out here at APE, and then uh, and then El Elmer put them all together. He had the butterflies and the barrel valve and all that. He did all that. Very cool. And we do know that Elmer was the mentor for this guy, Larry Spider-Man McBride. Yeah. And you've got one of his prized helmets, too. How'd you get that? Well, Larry, I, I forget the story. Now, Larry gave me this helmet. And what's it signed on here? What's it say? Larry Spider-Man McBride. Um, 580, 248. Yeah. That's an old 580 helmet back when they only only went 580 right. in top fuel. But, uh, and then you've noticed if you've been in the lobby before, I got the whole leathers. He sent me his leathers and everything. So I got up, in Halloween, I could dress up like Spider-Man. Yeah, I got the whole outfit. But uh, yeah, so Larry sent me this. And uh, so this is this is my this is my top fuel helmet collection right here. Got a pretty special connecting rod there too, don't we? This rod, I made these rods, a set of these for Wayne Davis, the late Wayne Davis, who ran top fuel on the West Coast, and he went to some Eastern races. Had a very nice motorcycle. He uh, was killed in a street bike accident, but uh, I made the first. These are the first billet aluminum connecting rods for the roller bearing crank. I made these, I didn't even have CNC, we made these on a Bridgeport mill with a rotary table. And this is the actual bearing race from a Kawasaki rod. We cut them down and just pressed the factory race in here. And the, Wayne gave me this one back because he broke a wrist pin and it didn't break the rod, tore everything up, but uh, the rod stayed in one piece. And I think I made these out of 7075, I'm not sure. Amazing. But anyway, this was the first, Wayne ran the first roller bearing Kawasaki and or Suzuki motor with an aluminum rod in it. And later on, we did something really special for Virgil Naff. And he was, so he could run aluminum rods on a roller bearing crank and the rods were bolt on. That's another story all in itself. And I know that there are a very select few out there that have a very special piece of Elmer's last bike. What the family did is they took the, the, the crash body from the wreck, and this is the actual piece of the body that had the APE logo on it, and they made this up and sent it to it. Now right below you can see the top of the Arius, and so John Noonan has one when he was with Arius. He's got the, he's got the same thing, but with the Arius logo. And uh, I don't know about the rest of the people, if it, who else got any of these, but uh, that's the actual piece of the body of the bike that crashed. It's pretty special to have something yeah. like that. Yeah, like I said, we were best friends, and I didn't have anything. <laughs> I'm people. What's interesting is people show their Elmer Tread handouts that they get signed at different races, 
I made all those handouts for him. I did his PR stuff. I made hundreds of thousands of those handouts and never had a signed one. You know, I mean, I never even thought about, hey, oh, would you sign this thing? But, uh, so yeah, people put those up all the time in their, in their handouts I made. I've still got some. Uh, I was gonna do a, a contest and you could win an Elmer, a, a real, honest to goodness, Elmer Trad handout. Yeah, well, those are, they're hard to find now for sure. Yeah. Now this is interesting. This is Antoine Brown when he was running, uh, when he was running Pro, Pro Stock, Stock motorcycle, motorcycle with his APE logo on it. I think I have another one I'm going to ask him to sign that. I got my national dragster at the races and walked right over and had Dave sign it. That was an amazing day, wasn't it? Dave Schultz winning a race while going through chemotherapy. Yeah, exactly. He was really a trooper. You, you remember when he broke his hand? Uh, some, something fell on his hand at the races and he broke his hand and he went to the doctor and he had him put a cast on that actually looped his hand around so he could hold a handlebar. And that's the way his cast was, so he could race with a cast on. That's dedication. Yeah. They don't make them like Dave yeah, Schultz yeah, anymore. Like So you, you have a bottle of wine from yeah. Dave Schultz. Okay. From Dave Schultz. Engraved. Yes, yeah, all engraved. We can go up front and I'll show it to you. But uh, when I was in my small office in the Burbank uh, location, I, it was under my desk and I kicked it and it fell over and broke. Talk about stinking the place up. And Dave was gone and I'm like, oh my God, that was, you know. So I got a hold of Meredith. Some, through several people, I got her phone number. And I talked to Meredith and asked if there was any chance that she had another one. And she said, well, she'd have to look. And I, I almost forgot about it. And I was at Pomona at the finals. I was walking through the pro stock motorcycle pits and Meredith comes over and she says, I have something for you. And took me over to her motor home and she had another, another one. So the one I have in the display case is the one where Meredith came to the rescue. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. What was interesting, and I told That's a nice uh, photo George, is every pro stock championship the Star Racing won, whether it was with Angel or John Myers, had one thing in common. They all had an APE sticker on the bike. He's never won a championship with a bike that didn't have an APE sticker on it. You better tell him to get an APE sticker on the bagger I then, did, huh? I, I did. <laughs> when, she, when he was running the Harley, she was riding it. I sent him, uh, uh, he, he got some parts from me and said, send me stickers. And I had a picture of her pointing to the sticker on the Harley. That's cool. There's wrist pins. The only thing we make for Harleys is wrist pins. We make all the top fuel pins. So George said, send me some pins and a sticker. <laughs> sticker works. Yeah. All right, Jay. Last time I was here, we were talking about that, right? Did you find out the real story? Uh -huh. Did you find out the real story of who's riding that motorcycle? I am almost convinced that that is a guy by the name of Ron Durham. So he was the stand-in for the great Terry Vance? Yeah, they wore the same size leathers and he worked at Vance Lines. And I'm sure that was one less thing Terry yeah, had to no, do, that right? that was a rumor that went around that that's actually Ron Durham. Okay. Uh, and I was gonna ask Ron someday, and if it was, I want him to come in and sign this for me. Well, we'll have to see if we can <laughs> confirm that story online. The other day and put that back up on the wall. That's, that's a heck of an honor, man of the year. Yeah. You know, that was, I think it was some, one of the hotels in Vegas had like a carnival area and you could go get your, you could get your picture on the uh, front of every different magazine. I did that one. Yeah, there's Anjo with the AP sticker on the cover of Cycle World. That's some great exposure. Uh, Dave Earl's mother used to race. That's Dave Earl from Track Dynamics? That's his yeah. mother? And his mother and father used to race. And they had a series going at uh, Palmdale and we spot APE sponsored it and Dave raced in it his father Don raced in it and his mother I think her name was Elva Elva wow anyway she won the championship no way and so we took this picture where I'm presenting her with a check this is out of Hot Rod Magazine Hot Rod Magazine printed a picture and only because it was a woman that beat her husband and son to win the championships how about during this shutdown thing we haven't had full staff in here so we haven't had a lot of uh a chance to clean everything up. This is all old school stuff. You said you still do a lot of old school work, right? Yeah, this, is, uh, this is mainly street bike stuff. Okay. That market's coming alive a little bit, right? The vintage market? Because well, of all the clicks? It's been a little bit of a lie for us, yeah. Facebook has made it more 
made it more so some of the guys doing that know who still does this stuff. Okay. But, uh, uh, anyhow. Now, I know we've encouraged people to send in their cranks. You do crank balancing here. Well, we do the lightning and balancing. Not much, we, we get very few cranks that are just balancing. But uh, we do the lightning and balancing. And uh, that's, that's kind of that's maybe what we do over there. Sure. And, uh, Huge we, benefits out of that, right? Yeah. I've been doing that since, 19, since the Honda 750 came out. I started lightening the cranks in about 74, 75. Been doing it ever since. What could a rider expect to gain with a lightened and balanced crank? The engine revs faster. And another, and another advantage is there, there's not one that's done to show you, but the way we cut the, the uh, counterweights, it creates less drag when the counterweights go through the oil mist. Okay. So there's power feed up there and it revs quicker. They don't waste horsepower turning a heavy crankshaft. And how long does it take you to turn one around? Oh, I mean, it depends on the crank. Okay. Some of, them, some of them are depends on the fact that heat treats and, and uh, there's all, they're all different times to do it. Something maybe good for a racer to do over the winter, over the off season? Yeah, I mean when they got the motor down, uh, it's, a good, it's a good time to send it in and do it. Sure. We uh, the 750s Kawasaki that's in the uh, laser. We put the rods back on. Just had them all shot peened. These are totally shot peened. And ready, ready for ready to order bearings and we get back his light and crank the shot beam rods okay. installed. There you go. We install a lot of rods here because people don't want to do that themselves. This is I call this the Cor the Corillo gallery. This is empty Corillo boxes that have been uh, just a portion of what's been installed here. Wow. Yeah. I don't think anybody's put more Corillos on cranks than we have. <laughs> That's amazing. Jay, we're gonna take a quick look at your extensive inventory here. You have so many parts. What's your hottest seller? I'm not sure exactly what is the hottest seller. I know that like in the clutches, the BMW 1000 clutch is our, our biggest mover. We can't even inventory any of those. The Track King. Yeah. And that's it got some amazing benefits, right? Yeah. It, well, one of the benefits of the uh, BMW clutch is it's about one third the cost of a BMW clutch. <laughs> Can't beat that. I, mean, that's, I think that's why one of the reasons it's a big seller, but uh, a lot of the guys that drag race the BMW is like our clutch. Okay. And uh, so we have like standing orders for everything on, on the BMW side. BMW and ZX14s, those are the two clutches we can't keep on the shelf. Ricky Gadsden uses the, the, the ZX14 clutch in his school bikes. I think that helps sell a bunch of the Everybody knows that, so every ZX14 guys all go for the Track King clutch. Got you. Now, you are a household name in motorcycle drag racing, but just in case somebody has stumbled upon this video for the first time, let's show them a little bit about of what you have here. You have so much. What does APE sell? Give me the rundown. Well, I mean, look on our at, website and look at the catalog. Well, we, uh, can, we can definitely do that. Yeah, they, our, our entire catalog is on the website. They can page through it with that. They got that software that lets you page through it. Uh, I think what we're known mainly for is fan sprockets and uh, let's see the Hayabusa's. The Hayabusa's and the 1000's. They're putting those together next door. We just got them out of heat treat. And uh, we just got our Hayabusa's and our 1000's out of heat treat and they assembled them and last week almost every, everything they assembled went out the door. And uh, and we were, we were really back ordering people on this. This is the roller cam chain conversion for a Hayabusa. This converts it from a Hayvo cam chain to a roller cam chain. All the racers use this one. And boy, we we were way back ordered on this thing for a while. Wow. And we finally got it, uh, we finally got all the sprockets done and uh, we got all the back orders filled. We actually have a few of these left over now, it looks like. But, uh, How many years have you been in business, Jay? I started the APE name I did this for a private label for other people, but I started the APE name in, uh, I have a, I had a resale number thing that hanging on the wall in my old office that said 1974. Wow. That's when APE started. Okay. But like I said, I private label this kind of stuff for 
uh, since the 750 Honda came out in 69. By 70, I was making big boy kits for them, but I was just doing a private label for other people. Well, like I said, I know all these racers appreciate your support everywhere I go, all over the world. If it's a motorcycle drag race, I see APE stickers. It's great. Last thing I got to ask you here, with this crazy COVID shutdown, with everything that's going on, have you ever experienced anything like this in your life? No, I kind of, uh, you know, we only have an election year once every four years. So, uh, so if we're going to have this, it's only going to be once every four years. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you yeah. go. How about, uh, speaking of elections, State of the Union on motorcycle drag racing, where are we? I know a couple years ago, you said that it was really picking up on the West Coast. They, because of yeah, because, the Kingsman. Yeah, and, you've got the, you've got like the Kingsman thing going on with uh, with uh, Wilton. Yeah, with Wilton doing the Kingsman, and then uh, the hand clutch guys. And then the other the other gentleman, boy, the name escapes me. They call him Pops. Okay, yeah. Pops. Yeah, Pops. Pops came back with his deal, and there's there's been more of them. Uh, the the top fuel Harley guy, Tony. Tony Ruggiero. Tony, yeah, they, he's got his uh, his thing going on now. So. You know, if they get the tracks open, we can have some racing out here. I think, like, what you'll see in the car racing is, like, besides Street Outlaws, this uh, door slammer stuff they're doing, 10 and a half inch or something or other. Have you seen how they pack out South Georgia Motorsports Park for all that? It's amazing. Yeah. I think you're going to see the, the grudge motorcycle thing growing huge. That would be great. Yeah. You gotta, I think the grudge thing is going to be really, really, really huge. And that's, of course, good news for AP, right? Yeah. Good news for all of us. Well, thank you so much, Jay. I interrupted you on a Saturday. You know that I can't ride by on my high boost without saying hi, though. <laughs> thank you so much. We appreciate it. Anything else you want to pass on? No, that's it. Well, can't wait. Everybody go to APRaceParts.com. That's it. International business still alive. You said five cranks going yeah, to Italy? This is five billet stroker cranks for the Kawasaki Ultra 300 uh, watercraft uh -huh. going to a shop in Italy. So there is still some business going on in oh, Italy, yeah. right? Yeah. Amazing. That's the first stroker we did it was the watercraft. <clears throat> I think we did these in two. I actually can't remember when we first did these. But, uh, but Jay, we understand we have some Gen 1 Hayabusa cranks for sale. Tell me the story here. Okay, these are Gen 1 63 millimeter stroke billet cranks made just like our strokers with a, the really trick straight shot oiling and everything in it. They were custom made for Skip Gladstone. He sold a couple of them. And so he wants to sell these. Okay. So if anybody, and he told me last time I talked to him, he give people a smoking deal. So funny, anybody's looking for a Gen 1 uh, Hayabusa crank and they want a billet stroker. Uh, not, it's not a stroker, I'm sorry. Billet Gen 1 stroke, 63 millimeter. They can call Skip Gladstone or message him on Facebook, work out a deal with him. They pay him, and then he notifies us, and we ship it direct to the customer. You ship it right out of here. We're not selling these. They're Skips. Excellent. Now, we know that he said he's going to give a good deal. What's what's the ballpark value of something uh, like this? Well, racer on this, if we made him, is twenty two twenty two fifty. Okay. I think Skip's going to sell them way less than that. Wow, so somebody's got a good opportunity. Yeah. Is there a big difference between the Gen 1 and Gen 2? Two millimeters of stroke. That's wow, right. okay. And we have Gen 2s over here because that's popular. Uh, these two right here are uh, 65 millimeter Gen 2 strokes. So they're for sale ready nine. to ship? That's a 9, that's a 9. This is a watercraft. This is a 5, 5, watercraft, 5, 5, 5. And they're ready, ready to ship? Yeah, they're ready to go. Wow. All right, Hayabusa guys, there you go. You want a high performance crankshaft, it's a great opportunity, right? Yeah, I wish I had one unpacked that we could show you, give you a demo on the on the way the oiling system works. That's one of the big advantages besides the extra strength on the uh, on the billet cranks is the oiling is so superior. On the Suzuki's, we can't do that on the Kawasaki's. We have people asking us all the time, mate, will you make a ZX-14 stroker? But the way Kawasaki's oiling system is, is not as good as Suzuki, and we can't improve upon it. We can't, we can't make them oil any better than a factory stock ZX-14, so. So for a racer out there that, that may be new to this, when they install a stroker crank, one of yours, what are the benefits that they're gonna experience? Well, the, the benefits of a stroker is it makes the motor bigger and it gives them more leverage on the crankshaft. And then the oiling, that will help durability? Oh yes, yes. Um, 
you know what, we should have taken one out of the package and uh, I wasn't prepared for this. Otherwise, I'd have one out, I could show you guys what the, uh, what, what the straight shot oiling is. Sure. That's okay. We don't. We have bugged you on a Saturday. You don't have to do too much, but I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that these are available. They're for sale. Yeah, they're is, ready to go, this and is it's currently ready to go. So if you're a Hayabusa racer, and we got more production, we got another production run going right now on the uh, on the Hayabusa. There we go, guys. Hayabusa racer. Tag a Hayabusa racer. You know, if they want a big upgrade, APE the, has them. I think these are the only two. Gen 2 billets in, in, in existence right now. For, you know, I mean, people we've sold them before. Um, uh, DME used to carry these, and, uh, and we're, we're all out of GSXR 1000s, but they're in production too. So we'll have those soon as yeah, well. Yeah, the same crank that, that Jeremy used to go 638 in Pro Street. Can you believe that? Yeah. With no that, wheelie bar on a street yeah, tire? That was done with our crank. Yeah. Unbelievable. But, uh, and they say there's more in those bikes. Yeah. Insane. Did you ever think you'd see a street street tire bike go 638? I was, I, when I saw that, the thing I thought of would have been, it would have been cool if Elmer could have seen that. Oh my gosh. I mean, I remember when he was going 638, and uh, if 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 you could talk to him and say, hey, the street legal motorcycle with DOT tire on a 638, he wouldn't believe you. <laughs> but. Well, uh, of course, then he probably wouldn't believe Larry's, what, 550? 550, 264. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, all, it's, all, it's all advanced so much. Sure is. It's amazing. And uh, AP is a big part of that. Thanks so much, Jay. You need a high booster crank, get a hold of Jay. The, uh, they used to break the snouts off of these Suzuki cranks when they put the start on. So this was one that we did that has a ball bearing in here. So the crank is supported out on the end, right behind the starter nut. And... Uh, not so much anymore. People aren't doing that much of that anymore. Amazing. The big motor plates, these things here. It's the whole motor plate with a, with a, uh, it uses the bearing for the counter shaft back in here. Wow. Still selling quite a few of those? Uh, not like we used to. That used to be the big deal. The boost has changed the whole market. It really did, didn't yeah. it? Can you believe the boost has been out since 99? Yes, that's hard to believe. We I, got guys racing them that aren't that old. I, I remember pre-99, I looked at the KZ and the GS as, wow, that bike was out for so long. I wonder what that was like. And now the Busa, we've got 20 plus years of Suzuki Hayabusa and a Gen 3 coming. Have you heard anything about the Gen 3? No, I, I don't know. I hope they haven't changed it much. <laughs> yeah, sure, you'll be I hope busy. they haven't put a one-piece case and block on it. That would ruin it. A lot of people don't appreciate the way the Kawasaki's put together. I know that for yeah. drag racing. They did it right on the ZX-12 and the 14. They made it all one piece. Yeah. And, uh, Tough. It's like you can't get the Japanese to understand what we're doing with these bikes. Yeah, but, uh, well, we know AP understands. What are these big, massive nuts? nuts. Oh, the, okay. 1150. These are the starter nut for the 1150 crank. And then we made some aluminum ones. We don't make those anymore. The ProStock guys want aluminum. That's an aluminum. We don't make those anymore. This is for the GSK 1000. Uh, we had a Hayabusa starter plate around here somewhere. Oh, it's all gone. We're, up, we're out of them. I tell you, these things here now, we put the starter plates together in order. They got all the parts over in the machine shop. So somebody orders a Hayabusa starter plate, uh, Troy just puts one together for him and it's out the door. Okay. But, uh, uh, this is an oil cooled GSXR starter nut. And this is a high boost starter nut. Amazing. So many parts here. We could spend a day here. Oh my gosh, you still got the. Look at the clutch covers. Yeah, wow. Access runs. That's been copied quite a bit now, though. I've noticed that. And you still have what the covers for the older bikes? Yeah. What do we have Quick here? Access. Quick access. That's a, I believe that's a slider. Is that a slider cover? Yeah. Do you still sell quite a bit of those? No, not like they used to. Okay. But, uh, Look at all this. My goodness. Wow. Look at all the clutch pieces you have. All the fibers. Well, I know who I'm going to call when I wear out my Hayabusa clutch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, uh, they were, they were putting clutches together all week, but it was all going out the door as fast as we could do it. 
these are uh, these are dummy shafts when you take the counterbalance out of your motor. This is a GSHR 1000. Then when uh, after we balance them, we don't need the counterbalancer anymore. So this this allows you to take the whole assembly out of the motor and you just put this in in its place and it blocks off all the oil holes. And then then if you ever want to put a counterbalancer back in, you have to ruin the engine cases by welding up oil holes. Okay. And uh, all these little things that drag racers use. This is a this is a Hayabusa flat oil pan bolt. Gives you about that much more clearance over a stock one. And uh, it's pretty just impressive. One thing after another. Oh, and look, the old school decals. I love it. Yeah. May I please have two decals? I want to proudly display those decals. Do you mind if I have a couple oh, of those? Happy, happy Thank yourself. you very much, guys. Here's the decal you need to get. How great is that? Yes. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, that was an impromptu visit. I was rolling by on the street bike and I had to knock. I had to see if Jay was there. How about it? Jay's there on a Saturday working hard. That's why he's so successful. I really hope you enjoyed that tour. If you're new to motorcycle drag racing, if you've never heard the name AP, check out their website, AP Race Parts. We have it linked on cycledrag.com if you need to check it out there. They have so much, and Jay gives back to the sport tenfold, as you can see. Everybody runs this decal for good reason. He was best friends with Elmer Trett way back when. He used to do the handouts for Elmer Trett, as he told us. Truly remarkable, guys. Thanks so much. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you want those parts that we mentioned that are for sale, those cranks, let us know as well. Thank you so much, everybody, for liking CycleDrag.com on Facebook and subscribing to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Much, much more coming. And if you want to know more about APE, we did a two-hour live video on the CycleDrag.com Facebook page about two years ago that you can go back and find. We do an in-depth tour. It gives you all the information you need to know about all the machine services that they have here. Enjoy. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this the one and only J? A-P-E-J? Yeah. J, what are I all these? The street racers. <laughs> what are all these? All my customers. I, and they're all outside your property. What in the world is going on here? Yeah. Got to look. I knew what was going on. Uh-oh. I went flying by and I said, oh, they're all, I didn't thought you hadn't gone out there yet. Okay. We got the, I don't know what they're talking about. I don't know where it is. Exactly. <laughs> now you got the Corvette out today? Uh Corvette? I got my, I brought my old C5 out. I don't drive it very much, so I thought I'd drive it today. Beautiful car. How are things going at AP? Fine. Excellent. What can we pass on? What What do we got going on? Are we balancing cranks? Yeah, we're doing a lot of great chef stuff. Today, I'm going to lighten and balance a CBX. I've never done a CBX before. Excellent. I came down on Saturday just to do this CBX. Very cool. Thank you for working on a Saturday. Yeah. I've, never, I've been to Idaho. In, I've been to Bonneville in it. Once or twice, I've been to Idaho in it. Uh, I've never been east or anything. It's just all commuting. That's a beautiful Corvette. What year, Jay? This is a 2003. It's an anniversary year, but not an anniversary edition. Okay. It's got the thing on the front up there that says it's a 50th anniversary. Wow. Everybody's leaving. This is your first new car, you said? Yeah, I never had a new car before because I never wanted to take the hit. But... Uh, I was looking in the paper one day and General Motors was offered 0% on Corvettes. They'd never offered them on Corvettes before. So that weekend I went and got one. And you got 190,000 miles on this That's thing. That's about 190. I got that much on my C6 also. That's amazing. Yeah. Very cool. Must be a good place to have it here, right? Right next to Willow Springs. AP has such a great location. Yeah, this is this is amazing. We'll, we'll be working in the back there. We'll flip the door open and watch all the cars racing and listen to them while we're working. It's really great. <laughs> With all these bikes, you could have put out the parts table today. Pardon? You could have put out your parts table today and sold some parts with all these yeah, guys. Yeah, we could have if I wanted to get out of bed early enough, but uh, <laughs> I didn't want to get out of bed that early. I totally understand. <laughs> well, it's beautiful up here, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, gorgeous day.
Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope we provided you with a little bit of entertainment. That's always what we aim to do. We love motorcycles. You love motorcycles. Let's keep this thing growing. Check it out, guys. Up here on the wall, 100,000 subscribers. I love it. Thank you so much. It's all because of you. We appreciate it. Please come with any story ideas. We love the comments and the feedback. I read every single one of them. The positivity is always appreciated. And you haters out there. I love you too because you keep me on my toes. Thank you for watching no matter what. Guys, to keep this thing growing, please subscribe to Cycle Drag on YouTube. Hit the bell for notifications. Share with some friends who like drag racing, like motorcycles. This is how we can keep this thing going. And also like CycleDrag.com on Facebook. And we'll keep rolling. We'll keep finding those stories. We'll keep finding those impressive, high-performance motorcycles that you want to see. Thank you guys so much. Truly appreciate it. You know, if there's anything fast motorcycles involved, we are in. Cycle drag. Rolls on. Thanks so much to APEJ. It was great to see his facility. If you have any questions, if you're interested in any of those parts, leave it below in the comments. We'll get you in touch with the man, the myth, the legend. And thanks so much for subscribing to Cycle Drag on YouTube, liking CycleDrag.com on Facebook. You know if there's anything fast motorcycles, we are in. Cycle Drag rolls on.